Mind is discontentment. Excerpt from Gems from the Ocean of the Being. Mind is discontentment. It never lives in the moment. Always prowls around in the past which is no more or starts moving into the future which is not yet born. It fails to recognize that this very moment is enough. The moment of nowness is enough and whatever change has to take place is to take place this very moment. It is never contented. It goes on saying, get this, get that, and only then I will be contented. But by the time you get it, mind again asks for something else. And the game continues for the whole of one's life, from cradle to grave. It goes on asking more and more, but is never ready to cherish what it has got, what it has, and in that it only attracts discontentment. I have heard when Alexander the Great saw Diogenes, a Greek philosopher, Diogenes said to him, I have heard you are going to conquer the whole world. But have you pondered over one question? Alexander asked, what is the question? Diognes replied, a simple question that you must consider before you enter on this enterprise of conquering the world. Remember there is only one world and if you conquer this then what would you do afterwards? There is only one world and if you conquer this world then what would you do afterwards? The story says that just the idea what would he do afterwards made Alexander sad. Just the idea if he conquered the whole world, of course the problem would arise. Now what? With just the idea that he had not yet conquered the world, his mind immediately became discontented and ask for another world, another toy. That is how the mind goes from one discontentment to another and the process continues. But there is something more than the mind in you. Certainly that is the only hope. There is something deeper than the mind in you and what is deeper than mind in you? That which is deeper than the mind in you is your consciousness. You can even watch your mind, so the watcher is separate from the mind and different from the mind as well. You are listening to me, the aids listen. But who in fact listens to me through the airs? You are seeing a beautiful scene through the eyes you see, but who actually sees through the eyes? You taste something through the taste buds, but who is that that tastes everything have you ever pondered? Indeed, you can call 
that watcher as consciousness, you can call that as being, call that as soul, but that is not part of the mind. You can even watch your mind. You can watch the thoughts arising in the mind. And who is there to watch the thoughts arising on the mind? The moments of sadness, the moments of happiness, the moments of despair, contentment, discontentment, all that are, all these are the aspects of the mind that is happening, a process that is taking place in the mind. But who is there to watch it? You can even watch your mind. So the watcher is separate from the mind and different from the mind as well. And this watcher has a totally different quality. This is just the opposite of the mind. This is the quality called contentment or absolute contentment. Each moment is so full of joy that you are so exquisitely joyful that even if death comes right now, you will not ask for another moment because this moment was enough. There is no question of asking for another world. Even for another moment, you will not say to death, wait, I will have to finish a few things. Because there are a few things which I am doing and still they are incomplete. Instead you will show your readiness. Contentment means this moment is enough. Right now all that I need is right here. I am here. I am blissful. Indeed all that I have ever needed and will ever need is right here. And to be in such a state is to know God. And to be God. Then each moment is a song, a dance, a celebration. Then each moment is a dance and celebration and has such infinite depth and so much treasure that no one cares whether tomorrow comes or not. Who bothers for tomorrow then, when life is so blissful this very moment? I have heard in his prayer at night before he went to bed, one Sufi mystic Farid used to say, Thank you God. And that was his routine every day. And in the morning again, when he opened his eyes, the same prayer, Thank you, God. His disciples were somewhat puzzled because this was not the Muslim way. Muslims have specific prayers to be done five times a day. What kind of prayer was this? He did it only twice. And the prayer was, thank you God, nothing else. So they said to him, please do not be offended. We are your disciples and we should not ask questions like these. This is your personal matter. However, we have become very curious. Why do you say thank you when you go to sleep and again in the morning when you wake up? He said, I say thank you because who knows, this may be my last moment and in the morning I may not wake up. So at least before I leave the world, I have thanked for all that he has given me. In the morning when I wake up, I am so full of wonder and I cannot believe my own eyes that I am here again. 
and the day is here so it seems I have one more day to live so I must thank him for the day another that another day is given to me so much is available the sun the birds singing the flowers blossoming and filling the atmosphere with its beauty and fragrance so I say thank you I had never asked I never thought that there would be another day but there is it is just a gift from God and when someone gives you a gift customarily you have to say thank you more than that I do not know anything he said more prayer is not needed just a grateful heart a thank you a heartfelt thank you a thank you coming from the deepest core of your being is more than enough of prayer there is no need of long prayers or anything else prayer indeed is a state of thankfulness and when do you feel thankful when there is contentment when there is fulfillment, when you are so full within that naturally the word thank you comes on your lips. In fact a contented being is continuously prayerful. He is the only one who is prayerful. Whatever he says whether he says anything or not, there is always a deep undercurrent of thankfulness. Every moment he is thankful. Indeed, contentment has to become your life. Contentment is prayer. And this is the essence of life. If you know this word contentment, gratefulness will arise and your life will become a prayer. A constant prayer will be there on your lips. These are the gems that arise only when you churn deep within the ocean of your being. Indeed. Contentment is the gem that ultimately becomes your prayer, the gem from the ocean of the being.